for anyone that needs it. Of course, meeting notes link is in the Zoom chat. If everyone wants to log in and go ahead and record their attendance. While we're all logging attendance, uh, feel free to add items to agenda, open floor, or any pull requests and bug issues that need extra attention today. We welcome all of those, of course. And I do not know if we have any new faces on today. If anyone wants to introduce themselves, say hello. I'd like to welcome you. Looks like attendance is actually pretty low today, isn't it? <laughs> Give just another minute for people to roll in if there's anyone joining late. All right. Looks like we have a slim agenda so far. So jumping into that. Um, final reminder, uh, check your calendars. Make sure that you are subscribed to the CNCF organizer uh, invite for the weekly meeting. So we don't lose track of that. We have some duplicate Kubert meetings out, uh, invites out there. And we just wanna simplify everything and make sure we clean that up. So we're going to deprecate and remove the other invites. And let's see, Andrea, it looks like you are dropping Details on CNCF Tech Docs meeting. Do you want to speak to that? I don't know that I've heard of that. Uh, sure. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, totally escaped my mind. But uh, every month, the CNCF Technical Docs SIG runs um, uh, runs their meeting, um, and part of the uh, the I guess pretty old V1 doc we had uh, from I think two years ago but I guess it's still a bit active. Um, talks a bit about uh, the, um, what's the word? I guess the, the out of date and the kind of like semi um, chaotic nature of the, the current user guide. Um, the growing pains of, you know, new content in an, in an old structure and thing. And I was going to attend that tonight to talk to them um, about potentially, well, well, the CNCF offers um, projects such as ours a um, the possibility of like a, a six week or potentially longer project from the CNCF technical documentation team. Um, and so I was going to see uh, a, you know, what their bandwidth is like and, and how they want us to proceed. Um, and also kind of see what it is they do. But the, the two things that have struck out at me from going through the, um, the user guide at the moment is the organization. Um, if you look at our documentation compared to say Kubernetes or a lot of other the, um, the graduated incubated projects, they do kind of follow a, a relatively consistent um, organization, which seems to make sense. Um, I think they've all, well, many of them have potentially followed on from the Kubernetes changes that I think went through in 2019, um, which is like, you know, concepts, tasks, tasks, reference, um, and then things kind of get subgrouped in, into those. So that was one possible project uh, for them that maybe they could help us with. And the other thing that struck me is potentially like um, 
uh, to ease the burden of starting with nothing and getting into like um, like a useful environment, um, which is beyond just installing Kubert, um, you know, potentially uh, a series of concise tutorials to get people, um, uh, you know, have their networking set up, have their story set up um, and, and virtual machines running with, with Kubert on, on Kubernetes. Um, so that kind of like introductory tutorial kind of material. So if anyone's keen to, to come along, um, it's seven o'clock, I can share the free information if you'd like. It'll just take a minute to figure out how to do that. I think I just grabbed the doc with their meeting notes on it. Can you confirm that I got the right link? Yeah, that looks that looks about right. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, actually, that's a pretty neat invite and recommendation. If I can make it, I'm going to try to. Cool. All right. Um, that does cover everything on the agenda notes. We have a couple of things on open floor. So, unless there are any objections, we're going to go ahead and progress on to that. Let's see, linting tasks. Um, does someone want to speak to that? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I take it you can hear me? Yes, you can hear me. Good. Uh, so recently, there was an effort to add like a linting uh, job to Prowl. And uh, the goal is to, like it currently only points at a couple of uh, places on the end-to-end -end tests. And the idea is to, over time, add more, uh, let's say, more code to the link to, to be lint targets. Now, the thing is, this is not uh, required by the CI, which means that there isn't really anything that is, will prevent people for adding uh, linting errors or things that would be flagged as linting errors as we go along. So it's a bit, thing is if uh, we, I mean, I think we should, if we have this, we should make it uh, required. And uh, because otherwise there's really no point in having people cleaning stuff up, but uh, no, not having the bot making sure that um, like more stuff is not added to the things to be cleaned up afterwards. Can, can I ask a question on that? Go ahead, by all means. Um, am I, am I uh, clearly audible? Perfectly. Yes. Okay, thanks. So I was wondering about what, what Jaffe exactly mean. Is that the current minimal linting job that just checks about the line length of the utils go file or what job are you talking about it's uh if you look at your well it's that plus uh go lint ci i think well i think no i i know so it's the one yeah. that look that it's the one that looks that makes sure that the test utils does not grow and plus like uh a run of a subset of the Golint CI linters. Okay, so I understood that Edward did uh, did a proof of concept of uh, running the Golang CI linter with uh, GitHub actions, if I understand correctly. But if I understand correctly, the other linting job that uh, looks at the line length is a separate one that is um, that is done by Prowl. So I am not exactly sure in what direction we want to go. Do we want to um, change the whole linting uh, into this Golang CI lint run by GitHub Actions or do we want to create a Prowl job on that? I, I think, let me just like uh, add something to that. Uh, I think these are those are two different things. Like um, if it should run on Prowl, 
or if it should run on GitHub Actions. Uh, he has like a prototype for GitHub Actions, but right now the Golan CI uh, linting is performed on Prow as well. So there's a make lint, I think, uh, command on a make file that runs both of them. And this is being currently executed uh, by Prow. I would like us to limit the discussion to just this part, not who gets to run it. No, no, I totally understand. I was just uh, confused because I just uh, didn't follow up completely on the linting stuff. And I was just seeing that uh, PR that would be a prototype on the, on, the, um, on the GitHub actions. Okay, so we are clear. Thank you. Um, oh. Yeah, you know, I think that linting in general, of course, has value. And, um, but, but to the contrary, what I, what I saw in recent times was that this linting job was failing a lot. If, uh, do we have an effort on um, stabilizing all this? We do, and that's the interesting thing. A couple of days ago, it was succeeding, and now it no longer is. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, like I said, I think in general, this is a good thing to do, and I, and I totally understand that, that we want to create a barrier on reintroducing bad stuff to the existing code base. Um, so, um, I'd say if, if it's stable enough, then we could make it required. But I want, would want to hear some other uh, opinions probably on that. And also, um, uh, yeah, sorry, here, go ahead. Is, here is Andre from the desk. Uh, I'm, I'm having some issues uh, when creating the uh, CI-CG uh, pipeline with Kubert. Uh, we are trying to create a Windows VM and the missing part I didn't find in the documentation and part so far, so on is uh, when I uh, add uh, a Windows ISO file to the VM, uh, it asks for press something uh, to start the, 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 the CG. Uh, on VirtualBox, if I choice uh, uh, to do the same thing, it doesn't ask nothing if the disk is not formatted at all. And this is something that uh, anyone find a way to have completed auto unattended install of Windows because I didn't find a way to automatically uh, don't appear that please press something to start the CG of Windows. Any any ideas? We might go ahead and carry this on over to the mailing list. Um, I send a red. That's why. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you for bumping it here too as well. We we need to make sure and follow up on that then. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move us along. I don't want this to, um, oh, apologies. Okay, <clears throat> sorry, Daniel. Yeah, but nevertheless, I think uh, Daniel raises a really good point. Like, uh, seems we don't have enough voices. I'm okay with move, moving this discussion to the mailing list. And uh, well, uh, I I'll revive the thread on linting there. Okay. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Miguel. All right, and let's see parallel testing on ARM sixty four. Let's see. Uh, 
uh, I put the task list in the uh, description of this issue. Uh, there are two tasks, cross-build uh, bootstrap image. Uh, I have the uh, rebase and uh, AD, uh, fix the error of this commit. And I also try parallel testing in kind native cluster. And uh, in terms of the um, 64 test, uh, there are 71 tests in ARM um, 64 with set ARM um, 64 tags. Uh, all tests has passed, and I run three tests. I run three tests at the same time in one my machine. Okay, so we just. Um, do we need a reviewer for this at this time? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I have a question regarding this uh, this parallel jobs. The I remember in the past that we tried to run uh, that we we tried to run the uh, all our net all our tests in in time, and the problem was that some of the resources, and I think mainly the storage one, were uh, were leaking. So did you had to treat it, or or we don't have any tests that are marked for ARM sixty four that. Uh, sorry, I cannot hear very, very clearly. I think you had to mute for a second. Oh, let me try again. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So my question is, we had in the past, I remember, so we had mm -hmm. our all our jobs running on kind because it's like much better than having a, running it on a VM. Mm -hmm. It's lighter and it's faster. But the problem we, we encountered was that, um, that there were some resources. Uh, like leaking between namespaces. Like, so if, he, if, if something was created as part of the test, it was left on the on the host, the node, and then the next uh, test created another one and another one, and in the end it blow up. So I remember it, it happened with things that were related to storage, like loopback devices. My question is, um, maybe we don't run them in, with R64, or we don't see this phenomenon anymore? Uh, in kind, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yes. In kind, I, nothing gets left on the host, does it? Yes, it does. Anything that is not namespace, it does. Like, it, for example, the, the classic example if a uh -huh. loopback is created, like a device loopback or something like that. When it is uh -huh. not, it is Got created it. on the on the root namespace. It has no namespace, so, so it oh. just create an another all the time. It's I leaking. See. This is uh, yes. Uh, you mean some some test that not namespace? Uh, we cannot test in kind, right? Well, what happened before is that you could test it, but it like, but it left things on the node itself. And it was never cleaned up. That was the like. It after a few runs, it just yes. Uh, and that's it. So maybe you are not running those, and then everything is fine. But I'm just saying that just to understand yeah. if you if you saw something because, like that, or uh, or we know uh, that our, there are scenarios that we can touch it. Uh, not yet, because I only run the test that that 
uh, with ARM um, 64 text. So the test is very limited. I run uh, them for a whole day, run the three tests for a whole day and all the tests pa passed. Uh, but <coughs> yes, you are right. If some tests maybe lead uh, to the, uh, like you said, uh, the look back device uh, would cause some test failure. If we keep running it, uh, we may need to skip them. It's a, comp uh, it's a, a compromisation. Yeah, so just because you are, you are controlling that, I guess you are the one that controls that server right so i guess yeah, yeah, there is yeah. a you should just monitor it that it's not starving at some point or something yes yes yeah. i get your idea okay. because in, in general so i will say yeah in mm. general i will say that uh, if we can run even the end-to-end -end test that we run in on on x uh, on amd 64 oh. then i will run them on kind because it's it's much faster, let's say. Yes. Much, much faster. So maybe yeah. we should also consider that to some test to run a, like, you, like you are doing. Yeah, okay, I see. Uh, uh, so I want to move to next step is uh, maybe we can try to run, uh, run test in kind on ARM for a while to see if it is stable or not, then um, maybe we can do, if it is stable, we can do more thing on, uh, in kind, right? Uh, it sounds good to me. Okay. Thanks. Daniel, do you want to comment here as well? I have no strong opinion, um, but I think uh, I didn't, by the way, Howard, sorry for not picking that up again. I just saw the email that you were uh, picking up your work again and that you posted something. So I, uh, I owe you a review on that. So uh, be sure that, that I should review this today or tomorrow. Okay, no problem. Very thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks, Daniel. All right. We have a PR specified here. Is that from, no. Yeah, that's my PR. I wanted to show you, uh, I just implemented the live migration for the pod network and it works well with the bridge network and the only problem I have this, with this PR that I don't know how to solve those tests in the end. I don't know, maybe someone could help me with that because I'm really totally stuck with that. So as far as writing a test to... No, I already, I already wrote a test. A test is okay. working fine, but there are some uh, few other tests which are not working. Uh, there are one which is required, it is failing in the same way on all the versions. Yeah, just click link. Uh, uh, on the last message, there should be link, yeah. Can you, can you start the thread on the mailing list because it's, I don't know how we can, uh, we can, I mean, we need to investigate this. And I, I remember the comments from the network, from the SIG network maintainer. I don't know what happened after that. I didn't follow. What should I do? Uh, I, Is it I think, um, um, uh, I think you should should probably take the discussion or uh, raise some attention on the PRs if you need uh, if you need some support uh, for those PRs uh, to the mailing list. Yeah, I got it. Because I think at the moment we we have very few attendants here, and I guess there might not be enough people here to help you. And 
Okay, okay. I just was I just wanted to ask what to do and so I'm just assign it to someone from SIG. Okay. No, no, uh, I was uh, either either that, that would also be fine, but but just also mm -hmm. probably just pay some attention on the mailing list for your PRs. If you need if uh -huh. you help, you should contact the mailing, mailing list that, because I think at the moment there are not enough people here in the room. That is probably okay, got it. Got it. One extra thing, I it, I think it would be very helpful if you added to the PR like a comment with the list of tests that you need help with that would at least uh, help Some label. people. Uh, not a label, just like a list, like a, a comment with a list of tests that are failing that you, you're sure that uh, they're broken and you, have, you need uh, help with them. Because okay. that would at least um, help whoever will uh, be helping you to focus on, on something instead of going through each of the broken lanes and figure out which tests are the correct ones to look at and stuff like that. I would at least appreciate that if I end up helping you. Okay, got it. Thank you. Welcome. And I'm aware that I really, uh, I also uh, owe you a review on this PR. Actually, the code of PR is already done. Uh, there are just one failing test and I need to fix it. I think, I hope I will do that in this week. All right, well, thank you for that one. Um, that's promising. Let's see. With that, unless there are any other last minute additions, um, we can do a quick review of PR's mailing list and bug scrub. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and look for anything stands out over the last week. Yes, uh, here's Andre from the desk again. Uh, since we are now, we have now the source code of NVIDIA drivers, is anyone trying to do live migration of GPUs also? Hey, Andre. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so as far as I know, we have, we're having um, uh, trouble migrating uh, GPU VMs um, because basically, because it's uh, a PCI uh, um, card, uh, there is data that is saved within, uh, within this PCI. And this is basically the main problem. As far as I know, there is no progress on that side. Yes, we're gonna try to, to make it work for you know. Any help is welcome. <laughs> I think the main reason is that NVIDIA just doesn't support that. Uh, we don't need to have support from NVIDIA since they open source the source code of them drivers already. Still, there, there is a license of, uh, right, to respect. Uh, they changed a little bit about that uh, on the last month or two, or two, for you understand. There is a way to do it over on, only on open source tools from now on. Okay. I guess a, a cursory look does seem to show that VMware is capable of live migration of GPU, NVIDIA GPU VMs. So at some level, the capabilities got to exist. Interesting. I was not expecting that. That's why I, I, I put these on the, on the, the group because uh, we, are, we already talk internally, but uh, any help how to start that, we can put some effort there, but any help is very welcome, okay? On the beginning to specify how we can achieve that. Um, it doesn't sound like we have a wealth of knowledge or contributors for that. We're on the call at the moment. 
um, as we progress, feel free to bring up other specific questions to the group. Um, and I'm sure where we can, we will. Yes, I, I'm gonna bring out. this to the group later on when we progress on that, okay? Sounds good. All right, let's see. That is work in progress, don't need to worry about that. All right, I don't see anything idle or not getting attention. That's not work in progress or draft there. Uh, if I miss anything, feel free to drop it. Um, the PR list. Take a look at bugs real quick. We have developer documentation for Kubefort. Uh, for example, it looks like this person is wanting to be able to build uh, modified images. I'm over my cellular phone connecting here. Can you put on the document the link I put on the chat regarding NVIDIA open source then drivers? Oh. Yeah, I think um, most of us on this call should be aware of, aware of the open source announcement. Can you just copy on the the uh, Google Doc mm -hmm. for reference later? Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Okay.
Do we have blogging specific docs? I do not remember. It. Okay, this is what I'm going to go ahead and drop out this one. Actually, Kevin, that's coming from my holder. I am should have looked at that first. I'm going to go ahead and leave that for him to run the way he wants to. What is that? Do you want me to talk about it? Oh no, I I I didn't realize that was from you. I was just looking for um, any bugs that maybe were idle that I could help contribute information on with the remaining time on the call. Um, maybe I can just uh, share what's wrong there in one sentence. So basically we have, uh, um, in QPCR, we have a way to define verbosity for the different components. So one of the options is to define a node verbosity instead of um, defining a verbosity to each component. Um, and basically the node verbosity does not affect uh, some of the components, especially virt launcher. Um, yeah, so this is a bug. We either need to fix it or to deprecate the API or, yeah. Cool. Well, one of the, one of the things there is that um, Vert Launcher is only, uh, can increase its verbosity above a certain level when uh, libvert is restarted. So we can uh, dynamically um, kind of change the verbosity only until level four or five or something like that, yeah, right? And, and then after that, other... uh, it's just impossible. Um, there is another problem actually that um, basically when we're creating the virt launcher pod, then we don't know to which node it would be scheduled to. And right, uh, right now we, we determine the verbosity via uh, an environment variable. So it's problem to change it afterwards since uh, pods are immutable. Yeah, well, that, that can be solved. Um, but I think, uh, so when we first developed it, uh, I didn't ever had the vert launcher uh, in mind uh, when we talked about uh, node um, node verbosity. I think it was just meant for uh, vert handler and all other components that are running, like kubert components, not the application. I mean, not not vert launcher. Um, so I'm not sure how to go about it. I mean, I would uh, I would Actually, simply get, get away with the documentation, I guess. 
Yeah, uh, actually, it does make sense. It, it, we can simply document that it affects only uh, infrastructure um, co components. And, yeah, it would be good enough, I think. Although, for some reason, also Virt API is not um, being updated, but I think this is uh, an, an easier bug to solve. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. That's a good conversation. Thank you. Um, are we aware of any deprecations on VertIFS? No, uh, I'm not aware of anything like this. I mean, we have a test that, uh, I mean, normally tests this. Mm. I, I think his jump uh, maybe from uh, 0 0.43 to um, 0 0.54 is, is a bit problematic because at some point, we get rid of the um, of the config map, and uh, all of this uh, configuration of um, of the feature gates uh, move to yeah it, it moved to the CR. So I'm not sure. Maybe there is still some kind of a confusion. Um, maybe he still have a config map around. I'm guessing that a combination of startup script and cloud init style things would be the only possible way to get environment variables published into a VM unless there was some kind of expansion on a guest agent or something like that. Is that correct? Yeah. I'm not sure how would that get into the guest. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess cloud init uh, script can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, Vasily, um, that user was, was asking us in Slack, so the user already using uh, cloud init. I uh, was wondering if we maybe if we could do some kind of ISO and uh, don't know. Um, if we did an ISO style uh, injection, it would still require something in the OS or 
via cloud in it to trigger reading it and acting on mm -hmm. the environment variables past. Or maybe read virtual UFS, we could mount as a file system. I don't know, like in the uh, ATC environment, something we should set up the, the environment for the bash, but it's a very vague idea, sorry. Um, I haven't tried anything. So I'm not sure if it works. Okay. Um, I wonder, I, I'm not, I, I remember now that you mentioned it, some of something in Slack about this. I don't remember whether that was Cooper Dev or virtualization. Yeah, let me find it out and I will copy in the chat. Awesome. There it is. Cool. Got it. Um, LJ, do you want to handle comms on this bug? I think it's a feature request, but when I have a bit of time, I would like to try if we can get it somehow working. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and that brings us close to enough to time. I am going to go ahead and in the call, unless there are any other last minute items or discussion topics anyone wants to bring up before I close out the call. Going once, going twice. And with that, thank you all for your help and participation on this call. And we'll see you again, same time, same place next week. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Bye.